practice assessment number two, part B, topics 10 and 11 from the national training package. So let's get started. The way the assessment works, if you don't already know, step one, we'll pose a question. You pause the video and try and answer it. Step two, we'll give you some kind of hint. Again, stop the video if you need the hint, have it continue to answer the question. Finally, step three, uh, we'll give you the answer and explain how we got to the answer. And then step four, continue on to the next question. So before we get started, I'll just turn on my, uh, my pen. I'll do it out here so I can see it. There we go. So question one. For the circuit below, if a short circuit was to occur across R1 and R7, the effective resistance would be. So R1 and R7, R1 is up here at 120 ohms, and R7 is the 80 ohm across here. So if they were short circuited, what would be the effective overall resistance? So pause the video here, and uh, it would probably pay to kind of redraw the circuit as you go. So here's the hint, redraw the circuit and eliminate the short circuit resistors and work from there. So the answer is 140 because basically, I'll just turn the pen on, if you short circuit R1, you've got a short circuit straight through there so it eliminates all of those resistors. If you've got a short circuit across R7, then it eliminates R7 and it eliminates that one as well. And we're simply left with the 80 ohms and the two 120s in parallel. So that's 60 plus 80 and that is 140. And if you thought about it, you probably didn't even need a calculator to work it out and we end up with 140R as the answer. Question two, for the circuit below, if R6 goes open circuit then, which of these answers would be correct? The current would go to zero amps and the R total will be infinite. The current will go low and the R total will go high. The current will go to zero amps and the R total will go to zero ohms. Or D, the current will go high, and R, T, the res total resistance, will go low. So pause here if you need to. So again, my hint is redraw the circuit. So redraw the circuit. So R6 goes open circuit. So all we had to do is draw the circuit and R circuit is an open circuit. So this is going to put in place an infinite amount of resistance in here. So the R total, doesn't matter what all the rest of these things do, Compared to the open circuit at infinite resistance, R total is infinite. If that's the case, because this has gone open circuit, there is going to be no current. No current whatsoever. Therefore, no current, infinite resistance, and the answer is A. Can't have low current. Can't have anything that has current. So you could have eliminated this one and this one very quickly. And then current does drop to zero ohms, but does R total drop to zero? The answer was no, it goes infinite. So the only possible correct answer could have been A. Uh, now question three, for the circuit below, the current through R7 is the same as through the following. So where's R7 here? at 20 ohms, 
So for the circuit below, the current through R7 is the same as the current flowing through question mark A, R1, B, R6, C, R5 and D, R4. So hint, uh, simplify the circuit to R1 to R4 at least in a network. So here's our answer. The answer is R5. So current through R7. If we were to simplify it, is R7 and our R5 is here at 20 ohms. So the, the 20s resolve here to 20. So if we do common all of those down, they end up being 20 ohms. So you end up with 20 ohms, 20 ohms, R6 sitting in the middle on top of a 20 ohms and a 20 ohms. So the answer has to be R5 is the one that is the same. Question four, in relation to the circuit below, which is the correct statement? Just fix that. So again, question four, in relation to the circuit below, which is the correct statement? A, L1 and L2 in parallel and the parallel with the switch, and they're in parallel with the switch. L1 and L2 are in series and in parallel with the switch. C, L1 and L2 are in parallel and in series with the switch. And D, L1 and L2 are in series and are in series with the switch. So we've got two lights and a switch mechanism, which phrase describes our circuit. So you might like to redraw the circuit diagram. So change the connection diagram to a circuit diagram. So the answer is C, L1 and L2 are in parallel and in series with the switch. So I'll just quickly draw you the um, the diagram. So basically, we have light one and light two. They're in parallel with each other. And I have an active coming in and out to the neutral. So the only answer that could fit the criteria if you redrew it and made it look more like a circuit diagram rather than a connection diagram is this one here. Question 5 for the circuit below determine the total resistance total current and current through R10 and the voltage across R8 so we're looking for total current, current through R10 voltage across R8. So hint is um, simplify the parallel networks first. Simplify those down first. So Here's our answer. If we simplify everything down, we end up with an R total of 72.9 amps, giving us a current total of 1.7. We've got 124 volts. And then we need to find out the um, current through R10 and you'll notice that R10 is out here all on its own. So as long as we know what the voltage is across R10, and by the way, it's 124. So if you 
follow the negative through for R10. There's the negative side if you follow the positive all the way through for R10. That ends up being the positive. So there's 124 volts across R10. So we know the resistance of R10, so it's not that hard to work out the current. So that's 1.24 amps through R10. And then the voltage across R8. Here we have the uh, total current and we can work out network down and work out that the voltage across R8 is 8.46 volts. Question six, for a long copper cable run, what is the best way to reduce the voltage drop? So for a long copper cable run, what is the best way to reduce the voltage drop? You can A, replace the cable with an aluminium cable of the same cross-sectional area. B, you could replace the cable with a copper cable of a larger cross-sectional area. C, you could replace the cable with copper of a smaller cross-sectional area. Or D, replace, replace the cable with a tinned copper cable with the same cross-sectional area. So pause here while you think about your answer. So list the factors that affect resistance. So what are the factors that affect resistance and which one's going to be the one you need to change so that voltage drop becomes smaller? So here's the answer. Voltage drop is all about making the resistance smaller. So replacing the cable with a copper cable of a larger cross-sectional area is the only way to solve the problem. Aluminium has a um, higher resistivity than copper, so A would be no good to you. Replacing the cable with a smaller cross-sectional area in B does exactly the opposite to what you want. And whether the cable's copper tinned or not makes no difference. So the only one that could possibly solve your problem is B. Question 7. As the temperature of a copper cable goes up, what happens? The resistivity goes down, A. B, the current carrying ability increases. C, the voltage drop increases. Or D, the resistance decreases. So pause here while you think about it. Hint, list the factors again that affect resistance and then think about the inferences. What does the factors infer. So the answer is C, the voltage drop increases. The resistivity goes down, well, temperature has no effect on resistivity. The current carrying ability increases. No, it uh, normally doesn't with temperature. And, what well, a tiny, tiny bit. Um, and the resistance decreases a tiny, tiny bit, but not enough. So the voltage drop is what increases. Question eight, calculate the resistance of a 40, sorry, of a 54 meter length of copper cable with a cross-sectional area of six millimeters squared. The resistivity of copper is 1.72 times 10 to the minus eight milliohms per meter. Sorry, ohms per meter, I should say. It's already in the right resistance. So 1.72 times 10 to the minus 8 ohms per meter. So pause here. Here's our hint. R equals PL divided by A. That should be the equation. So you should be able to jump to your book and have a look if you didn't remember the equation or didn't pick it off your equation sheet. But don't forget to convert uh, millimeters squared to square meters. Remember it all works in meters. So R equals P L on A. So our resistivity is the P, little p. So resistivity, that's this one, 
multiplied by length and the error is already 54 meters and divided by 6 times 10 to the minus 6 so that takes our square millimeters to square meters and we do the maths and it comes out at a 154.87 milliohms. Question 9. A length and cross sectional area of cable has 4 millimeters squared conductor and has a resistance of 0.54. So the same length with 6 millimeters squared cross sectional hair area has a resistance of so a length of cable we don't know how long it is has a cross-sectional area of four millimeters squared conductor and it has a resistance of 0 0.45 ohms so the same length cable with a cross-sectional area of six square millimeters will have a resistance of so pause here while you think through that problem here's the hint think about the cross-sectional area of ratios. Is the ratio going to go up or the ratio going to go down and what effect is that going to have on resistance? So R2 cross-sectional area 1 divided by R2 cross-sectional area 2 multiplied by R1 gives you the two cross-sectional areas. So R2 is going to be 4 divided by 6 multiplied by 0 0.54, which is the original resistance value, telling us that the resistance value of the 6 millimeter square cable is 0 0.36. And we can check ourselves a little bit because we can say to ourselves 0.45 ohms compared to 0.36 ohms. Our cross-sectional area went from four up to six. Therefore, we would expect our resistance to go down. Did our resistance go down? Yes, it did. It went down. It went down from 0.54 to 0.36. Question 10. A heating element has a resistance of 45 ohms at 20 degrees C. Determine the element resistance at 130 degrees C. And the permeability of the element is 0 0.005 ohms per degree C. So pause here. Here's your hint. So the resistance equals RO1 plus the resistivity, what we call delta T. So the temperature high minus the temperature cool. So temperature hot minus temperature cold or cool. Multiply by the resistivity, add one and multiply by RO, which is the first value that you were given the 45 ohm starting point. So here's the answer. Here's our formula. Our 45 degrees was the place that we started, which is the RO. Plus one is always just plus one. The P value was this one here, which goes into the formula there. We started with our temperature hot. at 130 degrees and our temperature cold being out 20 degrees. Then it's just a matter of doing the math through the formula, making sure you follow the parentheses, do the subtraction, then the multiplication, then the addition, finally adding that and then multiplying it here at the very end, 45 times 1.055 and we end up with 47.48 
homes. So I've done each of the steps there so you can clearly see the mathematical order. It's very, very important. So that brings us to the end of DC practice assessment number two, part B. I hope you've got something out of practicing the assessment.